Brahma said, On hearing his eulogy from the mouth of Vishnu, the delighted Shiva, the storehouse of kindness, revealed himself to us along with his consort. He had five faces and three eyes, and the crescent moon on his forehead. He wore matted hair. He was white-complexioned and had wide eyes. His body had been dusted with basma. He had ten arms. His neck was blue in color. He was bedecked with all ornaments. He was very handsome with respect to every limb. Three lines of basma marked his forehead. On seeing Lord Shiva accompanied by his beautiful consort, Vishnu, along with me, eulogized him again with appropriate words. Shiva, the merciful, who was delighted, breathed the Vedas into Vishnu and conferred perfect knowledge on him, the secret of the Supreme Atman. O sage, thereafter, out of sympathy, the Supreme Atman conferred these on me too. After receiving the Vedas, Vishnu was satisfied, and bowing to him with palms joined in reverence along with me, he asked Lord Shiva. Vishnu said, O Lord, how are you propitiated? How shall I worship you, O Lord? How shall I meditate on you? How are you impressed by anyone? O great God, tell us what shall we ever do at thy bidding? Please command us, O Shiva. Do this to favor us. O great Lord, be merciful to tell us all these things. O Shiva, we are your followers. Taking this into mind, please enlighten us on these and other similar points too. Brahma said, On hearing these words, the Lord Shiva was delighted. The merciful Lord then spoke lovingly. Shiva said, O foremost among gods, I am delighted by your devotion. Look upon me as a great deity. Cast off all your fears. Worship my linga and do always meditate upon the form which you see just before you. When I am worshipped in the phallic form, I will be delighted and will bestow different benefits upon all people, all that they wish for in their minds. O foremost among the deities, whenever any misery befalls you, it shall be destroyed when my linga is worshipped. O strong ones, you too are born of my own prakriti, out of my left and right sides. I am the Lord of everything. This Brahma, grandfather of all people, is born of my right side. You, Vishnu, are born of my left side. I am the Supreme Atman. Delighted, I shall confer on you boons and whatever you desire. May your devotion to me be steady. With my permission, you can make my form in clay and perform adoration. After rendering different kinds of service like this sensibly, you shall attain happiness. O Brahma, strictly adhering to my direction, you carry on the work of creation. Dear child, dear Hari, you shall sustain the mobile and the immobile beings. Brahma said, Saying thus, the Lord presented to us the auspicious mode of his worship, adored duly by means of which Shiva confers many benefits. On hearing the words of Shiva along with me, Vishnu bowed to Shiva with palms joined in reverence and said, If you are pleased, if a boon is to be given to us, may our devotion to you be perpetual and unstraying. Although you are near Guna, be pleased to incarnate in the course of your divine sports and help us. Dear Lord, you are the great Lord, the Supreme, O Lord of Lords, even our dispute has turned out to be auspicious 
now that you have come here to suppress the same. Brahma said, On hearing these words, Shiva told Vishnu, who stood there with the head bent down and with palms joined in reverence. Shiva said, Although near Guna, I am Saguna too, and the author of dissolution, maintenance, and creation. I am the Supreme Brahman, without decay and change. Existence, knowledge, and bliss are my characteristics. Truly, I am Nishkala, without parts, forever, O Hari. For the activities of creation, maintenance, and dissolution, I manifest myself in the three forms of Brahma, Vishnu, and Hara, O Vishnu. O Vishnu, since you, along with Brahma, have eulogized me and prayed for my incarnation, I shall make that request true, favorably disposed towards my devotees that I am. A great form similar to this, O Brahma, shall become manifest in the world through your body. He will be called Rudra. His capacity will never be less since he will be my own part and parcel. He is I. I am he. In the modes of worship, too, there is no difference. As heat, etc., in water and other things, due to the contact of fire, is not permanent in water, etc., Similarly, my nirguna aspect is not affected by external contact. This form of mine as Shiva is that of Rudra too. O oh, great sage, no one shall make any difference in it. The same form appears split into two in the universe. Hence, Shiva and Rudra shall not be considered different. A piece of gold turned into an ornament does not cease to be gold. There may be difference in name, but not in the material content. Just as the difference of clay and the various objects made of it is not a material one, so also in this case. The presence of the material cause in the effect can be cited as an example. This shall be known by all scholars and gods of unsullied knowledge. If you realize this, you will not be seeing the cause of difference. We all should see the form of Shiva as the basic material. Myself, you, Brahma and Rudra, who will be manifesting himself, are of the same form. There is no difference. If there had been difference, that would have been bondage. Yet the eternal Shiva form is mine alone. That pure form is spoken of as the main root, the truth, the knowledge, the endless. Realizing this too, it must be meditated upon in the true manner in your mind. O Brahma, another secret which I am going to unfold to you may be listened to. You too are born of Prakriti, but not Rudra. My command is carried to that place to Brahma's eyebrows. I am therefore spoken of as Tamasa and Prakrita, Hara in respect to the Gunas alone, and shall be known as Vaikarika too, which is actually the Ahankara, ego. That is called Tamasa only in name and not in reality. For this reason, O Brahma, this shall be carried out by you. O Brahma, you shall be the creator and Hari the protector. My would-be part shall be the cause of dissolution. This goddess, Uma, Parameshwari, is the Prakriti. Her Shakti, the goddess of speech, shall resort to Brahma. Another Shakti also will be arising out of the Prakriti. That Shakti will resort to Vishnu in the form of Lakshmi. Another Shakti, Pali will surely share my part. She will be born in the form of brilliance for effective work. Thus I have told you of the great auspicious Shaktis of the Goddess. Their activities are respectively creation, maintenance, and dissolution. 
O foremost among gods, they are the parts of Prakriti, my beloved. O Vishnu, you shall carry our near activities with the cooperation of Lakshmi. O Brahma, with the cooperation of the goddess of speech, Saraswati, the part of Prakriti, you shall carry on joyfully the activity of creation according to my direction. I shall have the cooperation of Kali, the part of my beloved, the greatest of the great, and shall carry out the excellent activity of dissolution in the form of Rudra. You shall be happy after the creation of the world, consisting of the four Varnas and their ancillaries, the four ashrams, stages of life, and the various sorts of other incidental activities. You shall contribute to the welfare of the world, making use of your knowledge and perfect wisdom. O Vishnu, be the bestower of salvation, too, at my bidding. The benefit accruing from your vision will be the same as that from mine. This boon is given to you now. It is the truth, certainly the truth. Vishnu is in my heart, and I am in Vishnu's heart. Those who make any distinction between the two do not know my mind. Vishnu is born of my left limb. Brahma is born of my right limb. Rudra, who causes the great dissolution and who is the soul of the universe, is born of my heart. I manifest in the three forms, O Vishnu, known as Brahma, Vishnu, and Bhava. I am the author of creation, protection, and dissolution by the gunas rajas, etc. But I am different from these gunas and directly beyond Prakriti and Purusha. I am the Supreme Brahman, the Eternal, the Endless, the Perfect, and the Unsullied. Vishnu has Tamas within, but Sattva outside. He is the protector of the three worlds. Hara, who causes dissolution of the three worlds, has Sattva within, but Tamas outside. Brahma, who creates the three worlds, has Rajas, both within and without. This is the position of the Gunas in the three deities. Shiva is spoken of as different from the Gunas. O Vishnu, guard lovingly this Pitamaha, who is the cause of creation. At my bidding, you will be worthy of respect in the three worlds. Rudra shall be worshipped by you and Brahma. The author of dissolution of the three worlds is the complete incarnation of Shiva. In the Kalpa called Padma, Pitamaha will be born as your son. Then you will see me. The lotus-born Brahma shall also see me. After saying this and conferring unequaled mercy, the great Lord Hara again spoke lovingly to Vishnu.